Hi sis, how are you? Hi, hi sis. Okay na ma. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you again. Ako din, after two years ba? <laughs> yeah, two years. Talaga, ang tagal din no. I'm really happy na nakapag time ka ulit ngayon for us na ma-share mo again yung skills mo in designing. Pero before tayo sis, mag-proceed sa tutorial, which is, I'm super super excited kung ano yung ituturo mo sa Boss of Fam and including na din sa akin kasi I also really wanted to know kung ano talaga yung basic rules when it comes to, you know, creating graphic designs, no? Ngayon ba sis, when it comes to your freelancing career, may I know ba ano yung mga services mo talaga na ina-offer sa clients mo? First of all, hi ba pa, mga boss? Hello? <laughs> Actually, since before, I was a general VA, pero ngayon, yung focus ko talaga is graphic design, and I know broad din masyado yung graphic design, pero isa lang yung target client ko, which is female coaches. Kaya all the graphic design ni sila yung digital products and digital content. Mm. For example, yung lead magnet, yung ebook, workbook, worksheet sa mga courses or programs nila, social media graphics, at marami pang iba. So, yun yung focus ko ngayon. Oh, so nice. So, malaki talaga yung part ng graphic design when it comes to mga coaches. No? Parang super effective siya for their marketing, right? Yes. So, I would like to know then, sis, nung nag-start ka bang mag-focus sa graphic design, meron ka na ba talaga background nito before pa lang. Yung kahit virtual assistant ka pa lang or an admin yung task mo. Medyo alam mo na or gamay mo na ba talaga yung graphic design? Bakit ka nakapag-decide na mag-focus na talaga sa graphic designing? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, kasi sis, nung college ako and yung course ko kasi is information system. Mm-hmm. Pero meron kami isang subject doon na about web design. Mm-hmm. So, parang nag-scroll scroll ako sa YouTube na nag-aralan ko yung Photoshop. Kaya may idea na talaga ako sa Photoshop. Pero dati mm-hmm ginagamit ko lang din naman siya mag-design ng car police, mga invitation, ganyan. Yeah. And then, nung nag-VA ako, gumagawa din naman ako ng graphic design. Mostly mm. then, except sa admin at iba pa, napangalagi pang iba. Mm. So, yun. Nag-search na ako ng free tutorial sa YouTube. As in, YouTube lang talaga yung sa graphic design na knowledge ko. And then, yung office mate ko dati, in-introduce niya sa akin yung Canva. Kasi, dahil medyo may alam na rin naman ako sa Photoshop. Parang sabi ko, wow, ang dali lang sa Canva. Parang ang dali-dali lang lahat kasi drag and drop lang siya. So, kahit hindi ka talaga designer, para ang dali lang matutunan ng Canva. And I discover ko, yung mga mostly pala ng coaches and course creators, mas preferred din nila yung Canva kasi if makagawa ka ng design, diba, ang dali i-share, sila mismo, ang dali mag-collaborate doon, tsaka parang hindi siya masyadong technical. So, yun. Yun yung ano ko. And hindi pa ako so far nakatake ng course about graphic design na tutok na tutok talaga para nag-start pa lang ako ngayon. Pero, nakapag-take ako ng paid courses saka private coaching din sis about marketing naman nung services ko and about niche clarity din. So, yun yung tinake ko. And then, nakapag-decide ako na mag-focus na talaga sa graphic design. Kasi nga, nung nagka-anak ako 2021, saka habang tumatagal, mas bumibilis ka kasi, di ba? So, yeah. parang sabi ko, pag sa design, mas flexible siya sa arts. Eh, mm-hmm. kailangan ko kasi flexible arts kasi nagbabantay bata o <laughs> Din. Kaya yun, dun talaga ako nag-decide na mag-focus na talaga sa graphic design. Tsaka yun din naman talaga yung ini-enjoy ko. Ah, yun. That's nice talaga. Once you focus on something, dapat talaga nag enjoy ka. That's the most important thing na feeling ko. Ako din, yan din yung pagbabasihan ko. Kung gusto kong mag-niche out na talaga na super specific na yung service ko, gusto ko na nag enjoy ako and then mas madali ko nang natatapos yung mga tasks. And then may I ask sis if yung nag-offer ka sa client is it per hour or per package or fixed rate? Ano ba yung mostly contract niya ni client? So, yung focus ko ngayon, sis, is retainer package. Ibig sabihin, if gusto ng client, iba-block out ko yung 20 hours a month ko sa kanya. So, that's 5 hours a week, no? For graphic design work. And then, fix na yung rate nun. So, if ever na matapos ko siya in less than 20 hours sa isang month, ganun pa rin yung ipipay niya. If ever naman, 
naman na mas marami yung papadesign niya and more than na siya sa 20 hours, mag-a-additional charge lang ako per hour. Mm-hmm. So, yun siya. And since meron din naman akong mga a la carte services, mm-hmm. yung pag may papadesign lang na per piece, ganyan, meron din akong ganyan. So, fixed price lang mm-hmm. siya. Uh-uh, meron din akong bundle, ganyan. So, pag ganito kadami yung graphic, unti-unti, mas mura, ganyan. So, if gusto nila sis yung mas detailed, check lang nila yung bio ko sa Instagram. Tignan nila yung offer page ko ng mga boss at mm-hmm. makikita nila doon kung paano ko ipackage yung graphic design services. So, sobrang hirap din sis ha. Kasi marami din nagtatanong sa akin ng ganyan. Kasi yun din talaga yung struggle ko dati. Kasi parang hindi na nag-work sa akin yung early lang sis. Kasi parang pinapanish mo yung self po pag mabilis ka. Eh, effective naman, di ba? Ganyan. Yeah, yeah. Saka, parang ang hirap mag-set ng income goal if, for example, pag walang masyadong project mm-hmm. yung client na maisip, edi eh, ikaw, parang hindi mo ma-estimate kung ilan yung magiging income mo. Kaya yan yung mag-package ko ng design services. That's nice, no, na flexible siya, pero sure ka na ganito talaga yung ma income mo per month. Ngayon, sis, excited ako malaman ko ano talaga yung mga ituturo mo sa mga boss of farm natin. Okay, yung ituturo ko is five tips to design like a pro or like a professional in Canva. Wow! wow I love that. Kasi usually, parang ang daming gusto mag-offer ng graphic design, mm-hmm. pero sasabihin, hindi naman ako marunong mag-Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, or mm-hmm. Illustrator. And, syempre, mas maganda naman talaga if marunong ka. Pero for the meantime, di ba, start somewhere yung madaling matutunan is Canva. And I can attest talaga kasi for a few years, Canva mostly din yung gamit ko and yun din yung preferred ng client ko and nakaka-earn ako and then from that, dun ako nag-uunti-unti nag-a-upskill, upskill, upskill, ganyan. Kaya, ang gusto ko i-share talaga yung mga tips, no? Hindi naman siya super technical talaga na, no? Pero principles din siya. Paano ka ba makaka-design ng effective. Kasi you can say naman na good or great design or magandang design kasi subjective naman talaga. Yeah. Pwede maganda sa'yo pero hindi naman pala sa iba. Yung effective is yung design talaga na nagtitell ng gusto mong story or yung ano ba talaga yung gusto mong i-communicate na message. Ah, that, that, that. Sige, sige. Gusto ko yan. You can now take on the floor, sis, for the tutorial. I know, marami kami matutunan dito. Ay, sana nga. <laughs> Hi, boss babes and bosses. So this video is actually for you if hesitant ka to offer graphic design as a service or create content for your social media accounts dahil para sa'yo, Canva lang ang tool na alam mo or knowledgeable ka. Especially if you see memes like this circulating online. O diba? Nakaka-discourage, no? But, first of all, wala namang design police na maghuhuli sa atin if Canva ang ginamit nating tool to design. At hindi naman natin kailangan maka-register sa PRC kasi hindi naman kailangan na license para maging graphic designer ka, diba? Hindi ko naman din discourage na mag-aral tayo ng Illustrator, Photoshop, at iba pang advanced design tools. Ang sinasabi ko lang is, sabi nga ni paring Arthur, start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Kung Canva ang madali pag-aralan for you, then start there. Kasi based on my experience, my clients don't mind kahit ano pa ang tool na gamitin ko to design their graphics or visuals. All they care about is the result. So, let me show you my portfolio here. So, lahat ng to are made in Canva. Mga social media graphics, meron mga offer mock-up, yan, yan. Lahat yan made in Canva yan. Ito naman hindi, Photoshop yan. Pero ito, mostly made in Canva. So, yan yung mga ito covers. Hindi ko naman sinasabi ha, na sobrang galing ko mag-design. Ang gusto ko nang sabihin, tong mga graphics na dinesign ko sa Canva, na pagkitaan ko na ang mga to at natulungan ko na ang clients ko to scale their businesses through these designs na ginawa ko sa Canva. So, if you're still hesitant, check nyo yung mga testimonials ko from my clients na ginawan ko ng design via Canva. And it doesn't mean na gusto ko mag-brag sa inyo. Ang gusto ko lang again sabihin is you can really become a graphic designer or makaprovide ng graphic design services using Canva. Huwag natin gawin excuse na Canva lang ang gamit natin to design. Mas lalong wag na wag natin ilalang ang Canva dahil napaka-powerful na doon And we can create professional-looking designs using Canva. And now, let me 
me share with you how we can achieve that. First tip is choosing and combining fonts. So in order to choose the right font for your design, you must think about the values and words that describe the feeling of you want to create first. So isipin mo muna ano ba ang ididesign mo at ano ang vibes na gusto mo i-evoke niya. So for example, dito, letter ng isang law firm. So syempre, dapat diba formal. So usually simple, clean, and readable fonts ang gamit dyan. Ito naman isang to. This is a birthday invitation, obviously for kids, kasi nga, first birthday, di ba? So, syempre, di ba, dapat yung fonts na gamitin natin is yung fun and bright and funky, ganyan. And most importantly, ha, kailangan i-consider talaga natin dapat ang audience. For example, syempre, if senior citizens yung audience mo, dapat, syempre, lakihan mo din yung font size, di ba? Kasi, mostly, eyesight, medyo mahirap na maka, ano. So, again, really consider kung sino ba yung audience mo when choosing your font. To help you decide, here are the common types of fonts and what you need to know about them. So first is the serif fonts. Serif fonts have little strokes called serifs. Itong para mga buntot na to. <laughs> Yan, serif tawag dyan. So they are attached to the main part of the letter as you've noticed. And they are commonly used sa mga print publications such as books, magazines, and newspapers because of their classic look. So if you design ka ng magazine, books, recommended siya na serif type of fonts yung ganito. Oh. Ito naman yung sans serif, it simply means without serif. So as you've noticed, wala yung mga buntot-buntot sa dulo dito. So this font type is considered to be modern, clean, and minimal, and is commonly used on computer screens. So mostly sa mga websites, ganyan. These are example of script fonts. They are derived from handwriting or calligraphy and are more fluid than other font types. Due to their handwritten nature, they usually provoke ideas of femininity, elegance, and creativity. So usually, dapat minimal lang yung paggamit natin sa mga script fonts dahil syempre di ba mahirap siya basahin pwede natin siya gawin parang accent lang ganyan and same din sa display fonts dapat minimal lang din yung paggamit display fonts naman have a more eccentric and fancy style they are best used for small amounts of text such as headings titles or logos here are tips naman to combine fonts first is of course choose one to two font styles per project or per design yung font styles for example are serif pwede mo combine siya with sans serif. Medyo off kasi siya if parehong serif or parehong sans serif. So, kailangan meron siyang contrast. So, ito, this is an example of a serif font. The name of the font is Playfair Display. You can combine that with a serif font which in this case is Railway Regular. Next is combine different but complementary font styles. Ibig sabihin, pwede ka mag-combine ng tall font and short font. Later, papakita ko sa inyo paano maghanap ba ng mga ganyan sa Canva. Another tip is pwede ka namang gumamit ng isang font style lang. But try repeating your font in a different size, weight, or style. So for example, Open Sans Regular para sa title and italic naman dun sa subtitle. Sa body text mo naman, pwede ka rin gumamit ng same na Open Sans pero smaller na yung font size niya. Now, papakita ko sa inyo paano i-apply yung tips na yan sa Canva. Actually, pag mag-add ka ng text dito, let's try one for example ha. Pag-click mo to, let's say gusto mo maghanap ng mga sans serif fonts. Simply type lang yon dito sa search and then nadi-display lahat dito ng serif fonts. As you've noticed, eto mga serif fonts meron siyang mga parang buntot-buntot, diba? I'm using Canva Pro, so lahat ng ito pwede kong gamitin. Using the free version of Canva, makikita mo naman dito na parang may brown siya na icon. So that means that font is exclusive for Canva Pro users lang. Pero napakarami din namang free available na fonts na magaganda using the free version of Canva. Canva. So, yan yung isang way para makapaghanap ng mga fonts sa Canva. So, again, don't forget to apply these tips, no? And another way naman, if hirap ka talaga mag up with ideas, you can try searching for font combination here. Click mo lang tong text, and then under this font combinations tab, napakarami font combinations na makikita mo dyan para magka-idea ka. So, ito yung ibig kong sabihin na icon na parang brown siya, no? So, if you hover your mouse pointer dyan, makita mo na Pro. Ibig sabihin, available lang siya if you are a Canva Pro user. Okay? If gusto mong i-try ang Canva Pro, kasi napakaganda naman talaga ng Canva Pro. Sulit naman talaga yung subscription.
description mo. So, isi-share ko yung link dito sa description box. Another way is, pag-click mo dito sa styles, medyo baba ka lang ng konti, at i-click mo itong tab na font sets. Click mo yung CA, and yan. Napakarami talagang font sets dyan. Try natin maglagay para makita nyo yung effect niya. Try natin maglagay ng sample text. So, pagpunta mo sa styles, yan, under font sets, pag-click mo yan, automatically, makikita mo yung content mo na mag-change yung fonts niya. Depende sa kung anong font sets yung pipiliin mo. Pwede ka namang mag-add ng isa pang font style, let's say script font, provided na minimal lang yung paggamit mo sa kanya. So, parang accent lang siya. Pag sobrang dami kasi at iba-iba yung font mo, parang nawawala yung focus ng design mo, parang masakit na siya sa mata. Which is why, minsan, sinis-skip na nung target audience mo. Meron pang isang tip dito to find professional looking font combinations. So, balik tayo dito sa styles. Dito naman, sa combinations, dito is meron ng different font combinations. At the same time, meron pa siyang color combinations na available. So, pag i-click mo yan, parang magic lang na nag yung colors and fonts based dito sa clinic mo. Ako naman, mas gusto ko kasi mag-search ng font combinations dito sa templates. Kasi, mas magkaka-idea ako sa actual look ng font sa design na gusto ko. So, for example, nag-ahanap ako ng lead magnet. So, mag-search ka ako ng lead magnet template. So, for example, parang gusto ko yung look nito. So, i-click ko yan. And then, yan. So, makikita ko na, ay, ito pala yung font na gusto ko. The Seasons pala yung pangalan ng font na yan. Ito naman, Poppins. Yan. Magkaka-idea ka. Mas madali ma-visualize yung font kasi na-apply na siya sa template. And then, pwede mo na lang kopyahin yung font name niya sa mga next design mo naman. Okay? Here are the tips naman for choosing and combining colors. Like choosing fonts, it's important to consider the tone of your project or yung vibes ng project ng design mo before creating a color palette because it plays an essential role in creating a strong first impression for your audience. For example, bright colors represent fun and youthful vibes while muted colors naman appear to be more serious or business-like. So, color psychology is a great guide para matulungan ka sa tone or message na gusto mong i-convey through colors. For example, pink is sensitive, intuitive, love, care, respect. And ito yung mga brands na gumamit ng pink. Barbie, Victoria's Secret. So, from this, malalaman mo, ay, pag feminine pala or female yung audience mo, mas appealing yung pink. Hindi naman lahat, di ba? Pero at least, meron ka lang base guide, di ba? Starting guide to decide sa colors mo. So, for example, black naman is strength, power, professional, accuracy. And you'll notice naman na ito yung mga brands na gumamit niyan. So, importante talaga na alam mo kung sino yung mga ideal audience mo. Di ba, nananotice nyo na usually yung mga organic brands, ganyan, yung mga eco-friendly brands, usually green yung ginagamit nila kasi tingnan nyo, nature, equilibrium, positivity, stable, and yung mga medyo formal naman na brands like yung mga banks, usually navy blue. Kasi nga, di ba, responsible, integrity, trust, peace, order. And ito naman yung yellow, for example, yung mga bright, fun na brand, ganyan. It's also a great guide for you to choose the colors. Another important thing to remember then is your colors should be readable and pleasing to the eyes. It means not using all the colors in one design. Kagaya nito, di ba? Yellow yung background and then ang daming color na iba-iba. Parang medyo masakit siya sa mata. So neutral colors such as black, white, and gray can really help balance your design. For example, white is a neutral color. So i-combine mo siya ng pink, di ba? Mas masarap siya tingnan sa mata. To find professional looking color combinations in Canva, go to canva.com slash colors. Yeah. And one way, actually, is to find an image that represents the overall tone or vibe that gusto mo i-achieve sa color. So again, pwede mo maging guide ang color psychology. For example, na-identify mo na pink pala yung color na appealing sa target audience mo. So, pwede kang maghanap sa Pinterest or sa Google ng any image na pink na feeling mo nagre-represent ng overall tone or vibe na hinahanap mo. So, let's try that. Mag-search na lang sa Pinterest ng pink. So, for example, boss babes or lady bosses yung target audience mo. Pwede mo screenshot lahat to. Or, pwede ka rin namang mag-save ng isang image. And then, we can use color palette generator. Upload mo lang yung image na yon. Automatically, nag-generate na siya ng color palette. So, yung hex code. Meron pang pangalan, di ba? Bongga! <laughs> Another way 
is to use this color palette ideas. So, click natin yan. If meron ka ng color in mind, you can search for pink and makakahanap ka ng mga color combinations na dominant yung pink or included yung pink. And then, pag i-hover mo yung mouse mo dyan, makikita mo yung pangalan ng color palette na yan. Tokyo Dream Sweet Cotton Sugar. And pag i-click mo yan, o diba, bongga, meron siyang photo kung saan nakuha yung inspiration niya. Cotton candy. And kung gusto mo naman ng mas advanced, pwede mo naman pag-aralan ang color theory. Yan. Pwede mong gamitin itong color wheel. Nandiyan. Pwede mong pag-aralan yan. And finally, you can learn color meanings naman and symbolism using this tool, color meanings. So, this one, for example, is amber. So, pag-click mo ito, malalaman mo lahat about amber or black. Mga history of amber pa. Here are naman the tips to find or use the photos. So, paganda naman talaga is gumamit ka ng photos na or if ikaw talaga yung next shot. But if wala kang professional looking naman ng mga photos sa pilihan, maybe naman humingi ka mistake. So, kung meron ka na photos na pwede mo Kasi baka free lang siya for personal use pero hindi mo pala siya pwede gamitin for commercial use. So commercial use, ibig sabihin, if pagkakakitaan mo siya. Of course, if offer mo yung graphic design to your clients, for example, gumawa ka ng Instagram post at ginamit mo yung stock photos, tapos hindi pala siya free for commercial use. Tapos magpapabayad ka sa client mo. So, it's not legal. Merong unsplash.com, free siya for commercial and personal use. So, safe ka doon. So, again, balik tayo dito. When choosing stock photos for your your design, avoid images that lack context or are too literal in meaning. So, this one, for example, don't use stock images of corporate people. So, ito, mga corporate people siya, di ba? Office people. When your target audience or your content are about freelancers or digital nomads. And also, the stock image that you use should not look staged and really should resonate with your prospects. Another tip then is, for example, yung content mo is about avoid stress Yes, ganyan. Mas maganda na yung stock photo na gamitin mo is yung photo ng tao na masaya. Not really na literally yung parang stress talaga. Kasi mas appealing sa audience if yung desired outcome yung gamitin mo for stock photos. So I hope I'm making any sense, no? Keeping it simple is really the key. So let me show you how to find high quality stock photos that are not cheesy and look cohesive or consistent in Canva. So let's add a page. When you go to photos, pwede kang mag search na lang dito sa trending kasi magaganda rin yung mga photos dito sa trending and search mo yung photo related dun sa content or sa i-design mo. Maghanap tayo ng photo for Lady Boss. So if you see itong mga stock photo na to, di ba parang stage, parang sinadya talaga siyang kunit. Maghanap tayo ng ibang keywords. So for example, pink death. So ito, maganda to, mga ganito. My tip is, when you hover your mouse there to that photo, click mo yung 3 dot icon. Pag click mo ng view more by that creator, makita mo yan. And they all look cohesive or parang same lang yung vibes nila, parang branded sila. Kasi nga, isa lang yung creator nila. If you're using the free version of Canva, make sure to filter by clicking this icon, click free, apply filter. So, yung creator nito, ito lang yung isang photo niya for free versions of Canva. So, that's how you can find high-quality, professional-looking, cohesive stock photos in Canva. Tip number four is applying white space or negative space. It's not literally a space that is white, but these are spaces that you add between your content lines, outer margins, and other elements. So, as you've noticed, ito, hindi masyadong na-apply yung white space. This is how you apply rule of white space. Applying the rule of white space gives your content a room to breathe. It avoids decluttered elements, therefore provides a design that is engaging and comfortable in the eye. So, di ba, mas masarap tingnan sa mata to? So, ang maganda sa Canva is makikita mo talaga sa mga templates na ina-apply talaga ang rule of white space. Di nila pinupuno talaga ng deck ganyan, di ba? It's important naman talaga na malaki yung fonts mo and readable. But again, it's really important to apply white space. So, pwede ka na lang mag-search ng template as your base layout at itweak mo na lang siya to suit your design or your style. My final tip is, of course, proper alignment. Alignment refers to lining up text or graphic elements on a page because a properly aligned design is not obvious but a design with 
more alignment will really look flattered and unfinished. Aligning elements on the page will organize your design and make it easier to read. Sa Canva, if click mo to, this one, this is the icon for alignment. This one is justified alignment. So as you've noticed yung justified hanggang dulo yung pag-align sa kanya. Ito naman is center alignment. Ito naman is right alignment. Yes, is it yours? Sa left naman siya. So, if ito, andito, ito naman, right alignment, di ba, parang hindi siya maganda tingnan, parang lapot siya. So, if gusto mo ibalik sa center, para madaling mag-align yung element. Click mo yung dalawang text na to, tsaka itong photo, itong shape, click mo lahat, and then, click mo yung position, and then, ito yung align element. So, pag-click mo center, automatically, magiging center niya, di ba? Pwede siya rin siya, Other important things to remember. First is to apply visual hierarchy. Visual hierarchy is the principle of arranging elements to show their order of importance. So in this example, na apply talaga yung visual hierarchy because great composition starts with getting users to see the most important messages first. So again, an effective design really communicates your message. So dapat i-apply mo talaga ang visual hierarchy. So this one, for example, di ba mas malaki siya compared sa ibang text. Kasi ito yung headline. Ito yung nag-hook talaga agad sa audience mo. So, for example, your target audience are looking for an e-book about wellness. Pag makita nila agad to, kasi mas malaki to, syempre, magiging interested agad sila. Kaya mas mag engage sila sa design mo. Using naman visual hierarchy through colors. You can also apply bright or contrasting colors. Usually, ginagamit to sa mga call to action buttons like this one. Download now, mga learn more, mga ganyan, call to action buttons tawag dyan. So, importante na yung color ng call to action mo is contrasting or different than the rest of your colors para makagrab talaga ng attention ng target audience mo. Kasi the call to action button is very important. Ito kasi yung mag-help sa audience mo to take action. And finally, repetition. Repetition is the reusing of similar elements throughout the design. It is mainly used to make the design more consistent and easy to understand. Dito sa example na to, diba? As you see, same yung font style, same yung colors. So, mas maganda siya tingnan pag consistent. Mas madali apply ang principle of repetition if meron kang brand kit or brand style guide. So, sa Canva, merong brand kit dito. So, this is only available for Canva Pro users. So, isang client ko. Yan. Andiyan lahat ng colors niya. Andiyan yung logo niya. Yung fonts niya. So, pag mag-design ako, for example, yung text, mas madali mahanap yung fonts niya dito. Pag sa color naman, andito na agad yung mga colors niya. So, mas madali maging consistent sa design if merong brand kit. Or yung isa naman na mas comprehensive is tinatawag na brand style guide. I think merong in-depth tutorial si Boss Suzy sa channel niya dito on how to create your brand kit in Canva. Super dali lang talaga i-follow yung tutorial na yon. And that's it! Pansin! I hope may natutunan kayo. Please let me know lang in the comments if you have any questions. And always remember, good design comes from a good designer, not the tool. And again, there's no such thing as perfect design. Kaya design lang ng design, focus lang on quantity over quality kasi we learn better from our failures. So again, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Happy creating! Thank you talaga so much, sis, for your tips and informative na tutorial para sa Boss of Fam. And of course, it's also very helpful to me. It's really a good reminder yung mga tips na ibinigay mo on how to create a professional looking talaga na mga design. By the way, mm -hmm. Boss of Fam, if you don't know or if you haven't watched yet yung isang video namin, siya yung nagturo sa atin gumawa ng puzzle feed. So, you can check out this video here. It's very, very nice. Marami din nagtatag sa amin na gumawa din sila ng puzzle pin. Uh -oh. It's very enjoyable to do. Like, super creative uh -oh. talaga. Nakahati ako, sis. Once makikita ko na nagtitake action sila, once meron tayong pinuturo. Uy, sis, alam mo, parang may mga nakikita
nakita na nila ako nagtatag dati sa atin, parang two years ago pa, na ngayon sis, ino-offer na nila yung graphic design. Mga premium, ano na sis, ah, design mo sis. So, therefore, yung tinuro mo before, ginawa na nilang package for their client. Oo, galing-galing na nila mag-design. Perfect. So, itong tinuro mo sa amin, like the basic rules in graphic designing, mas magiging solid yung pag-design nila once they will really take action sa mga tinuro mo ngayon. And Thank by the way, ba sis, saan ko ba pwede nilang ma-follow para masubaybayan nila yung mga tips mo when it comes to graphic design? Sa ano lang sis, yung Instagram handle ko is ludesignph, tsaka sa YouTube channel, ludesign. Yun. Okay. Yes. We will put a link below so that you can just click it. Thank you talaga so much. Thank you. Sis. Thank you. Thank you din sis. It's Next time na naman. <laughs> Bye! Bye! Bye-bye!